Hey everybody, Thaddeus from Primal Hacker, where we teach you about biohacking. Today, I want to show you how to use an EMF meter, specifically the Acousticom 2. If you've watched any of my videos, listened to any of my stuff, you know why it's so important to protect yourself from EMF, electromagnetic frequencies, and to understand where those frequencies are in your home. So important to know how impacted you are and how to protect yourself. And the only way, literally the only way to know how they impact you is with an EMF meter. So this is the Acousticom 2. You literally just press the button once. This is what it looks like. It's very small, smaller than a cell phone. I purchased mine from here, from Safer Living. And right now it's showing us from yellow, orange, red to green. So green being perfectly acceptable, mostly. And yellow then being a little concerning, of course, all the way up to red being very, very much microwave radiation dangerous levels in your home. So we have the Wi-Fi permanently turned off. There's no cell phones on right now in this home. There is only the neighbor's Wi-Fi. So you can see it's not great, but you can see it drip down to uh, green once in a while. That's the neighbor's Wi-Fi. And somewhere out here, there is a cell phone tower probably pushing its way into this house. But there's no frequencies in this home, microwave frequencies, that are turned on in our house. So I'm going to have to show you how you use this. So one push of the button turns this on, and you'll see what the readings are. And it's in volts per meter. That's the number of volts per meter hitting this device, therefore hitting your body in the home. You can look up a chart that tells you safe and not safe microwave radiation intensities in volts per meter, and you just check it out with this. And really, it's easy because it's color-coded on here already. Now, if you click this button again, second time, you hear a sound. You can hear the microwaves. I'm going to turn that off for a second so you can hear me. And one thing to understand is this goes up to 8 gigahertz. Most microwave radiation today is less than 8 gigahertz, so you can measure. 5G goes all the way from 8 gigahertz up to 90 gigahertz. 6G goes even further to 300 gigahertz. This isn't going to measure 5G for the most part. Some 5G frequencies are lower than 8 gigahertz. There's a whole spectrum open. You'll be able to measure all the 5G signals below 8 gigahertz, nothing above 8 gigahertz. But you can measure 4G, 3G, 2G, 1G, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of that good stuff just with this. So this is going to pick up your Bluetooth headphones. This is going to pick up your Bluetooth speaker. This is going to pick up your microwave cooking oven. Hopefully you don't have one. We don't have one. This is going to pick up your Wi-Fi router, any Wi-Fi devices. Hopefully you have no Wi-Fi lights up there. And it's going to pick up the cell phone towers running on 1, 2, 3, or 4G. Potentially 5G as well, again, below 8 gigahertz. Now, what you do to use this meter is you kind of see, like, right here is my office, right? So I'm going to check, like, in my chair, sitting in my office, how much microwave radiation am I exposed to? And it's a little more than I would like. Typically, this is green in this area. Now, unfortunately, everybody's home. It's 2020. We all know everyone's in their home. They're all using their devices in their home. They're boosting their Wi-Fi signals to get better Wi-Fi so they can work from home. And there's just more devices around, more devices. Each device is a microwave emitting device. Your phone emits microwave radiation if it's turned off airplane mode. So that means the more devices in an area, the more microwaves you are exposed to. So I don't like to see this quite so high, but the way you're gonna use this is you're gonna walk around your home. So let's just do like a quick walk around and we're gonna see what happens as I walk. And you can kind of see you know, there's some areas that are higher. You get some blips. You want to investigate those blips. And I'm going to show you something here in a minute. Okay, so then we go here. Let's just, we'll just stand in one area. We'll kind of check it out. So it's a little high here as well. You know, I've got neighbors, Wi-Fi maybe coming in from there. There's a school across the street. And they've been boosting the Wi-Fi signals in the schools as well. Um, now, one thing that you're going to see. So I'm going to pause here for a sec. You may find there's one area of your house, let me turn this on, that you pick up a ton of radiation. So, for instance, all of a sudden you get to an area and you, you hear this thing going crazy, it's in the red, you know, something is going on here. That, it's time for you to investigate. So, here's what I found. 
So there's a phone, not, I didn't, I actually planted this because I want you to see what happens. This phone is not on airplane mode. So what I'm going to do, you can look at the signal here. It's going very high, especially as we get closer to the phone. I am going to turn this on airplane mode. The phone is now on airplane mode and you can see this drops down. I'm gonna turn the sound back on. There, phone on airplane mode. So you may go around and find a Wi-Fi router. So you probably can't see my Wi-Fi router. I'm gonna go see if you can see it back here. Um, uh, probably not. It is right back here is the Wi-Fi router. And it is turned off. So it's actually, let me take that back. So this is an odd signal. It's not coming from the house, not coming from the Wi-Fi router. My Wi-Fi router is on, but the Wi-Fi is disabled. So that's something that you can do at home too. I've got videos on how you can disable your Wi-Fi. Now, this signal is coming from somewhere at one of the neighbor's homes, probably someone that's boosting their Wi-Fi, which is making it come in here. You don't need to boost your Wi-Fi. Uh, just use landlines. Okay, so then I encourage you to go to your sleeping area. So we're gonna do that. So we're coming up here, we're gonna be checking the signals. Look at that, it's actually much better up, up in this part of the house. Kind of come into where I sleep. Look at that signal, so that's amazing. Now, I don't want any microwave radiation at all where I sleep. And you can see what's behind me. This is a canopy over my, and says, you can see through that canopy, you know, so it's, it's the see-through canopy. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this canopy. Look at this, this is my sleeping area, it's super, super low. Uh, one thing that I'm going to do, now I'm going to drop this. So there we go. I'm going to bring you guys inside. All right, so here we are. We're inside the sleeping canopy. This is not turned off. It's on, but there's zero cell phone signal, zero Wi-Fi, zero Bluetooth. There's no signals in here. So in this bed, you can see it goes, it goes up to the ceiling. It goes all around. I've got uh, some nightstands in here. And... I'm on the second floor, so uh, there could be signals coming in from the floor, or you, uh, not for me because there is metal underneath this bed. So you need to block the floor under the bed as well as all around it with something like a canopy to get this to be zero. So I'm gonna turn it back on. Nothing's registering. And you saw that this works perfectly well. As soon as I open the canopy, uh, let me see if I can just open a, a corner of it here for you and we're gonna see what leaks in. So now we're seeing a little bit more leak in. We're gonna go close to that corner and yep, little bits leaking in right there now that the corner is open. But that is very important to check your bedroom for these signals. That's where you sleep, that's where you get optimal recovery. That's how I use this meter. As I walk around the house with this meter or someone else's house if I'm you know checking their signals. And whenever I see really high amounts, I first start with people's cell phones. Turn the cell phones on airplane mode. Make sure that when they're on airplane mode, your Wi-Fi is disabled, your Bluetooth is disabled. Because some cell phones, when you turn them on airplane mode, they keep the Wi-Fi signal and the Bluetooth on. Don't do that. Get them on airplane mode. The next thing I'm going to do is check their Wi-Fi router. And if their Wi-Fi router is on, we're going to walk around the house and see where this spikes. Especially check their bedroom. Then we're going to turn the Wi-Fi router off. We're going to go back to the bedroom and check the levels. If we still find high levels walking around the house, we're going to check. Is there one of those Alexas? Is there, a, I don't know, whatever those little wireless devices are that you can ask questions or play music or a Bluetooth speaker. Uh, your television, if your television is turned off but still plugged in, it will emit a Wi-Fi signal because it's probably a smart TV. So put it on a power strip and turn the power strip off so there's no power getting to the TV. The Wi-Fi on the TV will then be disabled. So then we're going to check other things in the home, so other wireless devices that emit uh, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Once we've done all of that and we've shut all of them down, we're gonna check this again and see what the base level of microwave radiation is in somebody's house with this Acousticom 2. And we're, that will tell us from the neighbors and from the cell phone towers, how radiated are you? That's important. So if you have very high levels, so mine were actually higher than they have ever been. It's almost always in the green in my house everywhere, especially where I sit in my office uh, until now everyone's working from home. That would indicate that you wanna block those emissions in that area to be safest. And so I would probably look at some paint or some curtains that block EMF to put over those windows. I don't wanna block out the windows. So then maybe I might ground myself 
when I work. So I put a grounding mat down. These are all the mitigation strategies, but the number one thing to do is you first have to test. So if somebody says, I'm 500 meters away from a cell phone tower, is that too close? I'm a mile from the closest cell phone tower, is that too close? I don't know until you measure. So this Acousticon 2 is gonna measure and tell you, is it the cell phone tower that's irradiating you? Is it the Wi-Fi that's the most uh, disruptive in your house? Is it uh, some sort of wireless LED light that you have set up? Uh, that could be something that's irradiating you more than anything. What I found that irradiates me more than anything else in my house, even more than the Wi-Fi router was, is my printer. My printer had off the chart readings of this so high, just about as high as my Wi-Fi router or higher, and I sit much closer to my printer. I always just left it on because it kind of shuts itself off. But when it shuts itself off, it's still emitting Wi-Fi, I found. With this, I wouldn't have known until I tested. So now my printer is always turned off unless I'm printing because of the massive amount of Wi-Fi radiation. This is the meter that you are gonna use to walk around your house to test the radiation, the microwave radiation. There's other radiation from electromagnetic fields. That's electrical fields and magnetic fields that are also coming through the walls and your appliances. Those are different meters. That is not what you can use this for. This only measures microwave radiation, which is a specific frequency of radiation in the what they call the microwave range. So you're gonna use this to test for microwaves, which again is cell phones, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi. That's what you're using this for. There are other meters for other things. So again, number one, check the places you spend the most time. Most people, it's the bedroom. Then for me, it's my home office. So I want those two areas to be the least amount. In fact, my bedroom, I want to be zero because this is where I recover and sleep. That's how to use the Acousticom 2. If you have any questions, let us know below.